What's up, NBA fan? What's up, all sports fans? This your boy, JB, host of the Behind the Bench Podcast Networking channel. Giving a shout out to the rest of the crew, Shad, Kelvin, Jermaine, KB Field Room, Big Dog Talk Sports. That's right. That's right. For everyone who's tuning in, we hope that you support Behind the Bench, become a subscriber, help make this show the best that it can be. Now, I have a treat that I want to share. And it's in regards to this constant, no hold barge debate as to who's the greatest player ever between Michael Jordan and LeBron James. And me personally, uh, I never felt that there was a legitimate debate. Uh, Jordan set such a high standard and he left such a lasting impact and imprint in basketball and NBA that as soon as you lose a championship or a finals round, at that moment, there is no debate. See, I try to cut through all the smoke and all the narratives that have been painted out and all the agenda-based uh, uh, commentary and conjecture that's constantly being projected on these, you know, on these sports talk shows or podcasts, uh, you know, uh, major uh, 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 sports podcasts on the daily, and I get right to the chase. The record is the record. The facts are the facts. And the truth is the constant. The one constant is the truth. And, and you know the truth will always stand because they try to contort the truth and try to contort and twist, undermine, and try to erase history. But the truth will always stand no matter what, man. No matter what they try to do, they can use all the sophisticated tactics they can but the truth will stand. Now, this is the thing. I came across uh, a segment of the Odd Couple uh, hosted by Rob Parker and uh, Chris Broussard. And it was something that Rob Parker pointed out, man. And see, I'm going to play this in a minute. And, and the thing about it, man, it cuts so deep and it shows to the highest degree that there is no debate. Greatness, absolute greatness. See, we've never seen an NBA player. We we got Mount Rushmore players. We got all-time dominant players. I'm, when, I, when I talk about absolute greatness, I'm literally talk to, talking about perfecting your craft. Like conquering your sport. To me, that's absolute greatness, and that supersedes statistical accumulation production. It's a combination of winning, dominating, overcoming the odds, winning as a favorite, winning as an underdog, you know, uh, doing it by the book, not shortcutting the game. And I want to play something that Rob Parker highlighted. And it's so amazing, man, that you look at Michael Jordan and you be like, they're trying to compare this guy to that guy? I'm finna play it. But it Kyle, Chris, you just help me with this. Is this, is this real? I saw something. And look, that Michael Jordan... In championship games, Chris, have you seen this? Michael Jordan has played in the championship 11 times. And I'll give you the... the in the, the end? Championship. Okay, in his career. In a championship game, okay? Or, or championship. You mean a game seven? No, no, no. Like to win a championship series. Okay, here it is. NCAA, he's 1-0. When you play, play in the championship. The Olympics, 2-0. NBA six and up, and I guess the FIBA World Classics, right? Chris? Right, right. He was two and zero in that. So it said, the, "What so is that? Are those series? Some of them? Yeah, let me, let they, me read. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here, let me read it again. It just says Michael right. Jordan played for a championship eleven times. Right, right. 
He's 11-0 in those games slash series. Yeah. That that adds up, right? I wasn't sure about yeah, the FIBA. Yeah. Right? NCAA, they won a championship. Right. Olympics two. Six and O in the NBA and then the FIBA. So it basically that what that basically tells you is when the everything was on the line. He always won. Yeah. And, he, and see, that's the great separator right there. When it comes to championship play. Championship level pressure when everything is on the line. When you absolutely have to have it. This man did not lose. He was perfect and unbeatable in championship play there is no debate see when you gotta jostle around and you gotta force organizations to mortgage their future away to help stack the deck which reduces the level of attrition and the normal challenges that you would have to face as the primary as how can I say this as the the impetus of whether your team is going to win or lose and you try to reduce that well what you're saying is if you had to play under the same pressure I'm not talking about when they say well, someone's under tremendous pressure coming to the lead to succeed because there's a plenty of players who entered the NBA. Yes, LeBron James had, had pressure and expectations when he entered the NBA. Yes, he did. I'm not taking that away from him. But so did Carmelo Anthony. Carmelo Anthony led his team, the Syracuse Orangemen, as a, as a collegiate player to Syracuse's only NCAA championship. And he did it as a true freshman. The only NCAA championship, uh, Jimmy Beheim, the long-standing head coach for Syracuse uh, men's uh, college basketball team, was led by Carmelo Anthony. So he had pressure. Dwayne Wade had pressure coming to the league. He led his team, Marquette, to the uh, Final Four in his sophomore year. Shaquille O'Neal had pressure when he entered the NBA. Grant Hill had pressure entering the NBA. Patrick Ewing, his number one pick, had pressure entering the NBA. David Robinson had a ton of pressure entering the NBA because he had to serve a two-year naval commitment before he entered the pro. So there was this great anticipation on Bill Ru uh, on David Robinson coming right in and dominate. He was called the next Bill Russell. And he won Rookie of the Year. And people were saying he was better than Akeem Olajuwon. Wimby Yama has a lot of pressure. I mean, we can go down the line. Allen Alverson, AI, came in with a lot of pressure. So what I'm, what I'm saying is, that's more like, that's more like proving that you belong in the league. But when it comes to the world watching, turning on TV, watching you. And it's up to you. It's truly up to you. It ain't about role players coming through or not, whether they come through or not. It's truly up to you. As to whether your team is going to win a title or not. It's not even close. It's not even close. Look, Michael Jordan one to such a degree at, at such a pristine level of performance that he concluded by 1993 that for all practical purposes, he conquered the sport of basketball. See, LeBron James hasn't conquered the sport of basketball. That's why he's still playing, trying to accumulate all these stats to make his case known. Well, Michael Jordan said, 
I don't even need to pursue Kareem. He could have did it. He could have did it if he would if he set his mind to it. But he he felt he he constantly sport to such a degree that it led him to reach the conclusion that I have no more challenges. See, LeBron is trying to accumulate statistics to make his case. Joy was about the challenges were the competition itself. See, it's a different mindset and you get different outcomes. So Jordan felt that he dominated his sport to such a degree because the Chicago Bulls, through his leadership, was the first team since the 60s Boston Celtics to win three straight NBA championships. And there's been a lot of great teams in between that time that was dominant. The New York Knicks of the 70s, Showtime Lakers of the 80s, Bird Magic, a uh, Bird Mikhail Parrish uh, led Celtics of the 80s, the Bad Boy Pistons, the these the Philadelphia 76ers, all great all-time teams. But they never they couldn't three-peat. And he did that. And it led him to conclude that I truly retired. Not not just as it, he retired saying to himself. At the top of my sport, I conquered a sport. He went to go pursue another sport. Then, two years later, he comes back and prepared to dominate once again and completes and achieves another three-peat. It's not close. Meaning, meaning, when, when, when detractors of Jordan try to say the competition that he faced was lackluster, well, that's a slap in the face. Because he hit the game-winning shot in the 82 National Championship game between North Carolina and Georgetown, which I, I believe Georgetown was favored in that game because of Patrick Ewan and his, his dominance, Jordan hit the game with a shot. Then he led Team USA uh, the, the last time that we saw a uh, 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 U.S. men's Olympic basketball team uh, featuring uh, college players. They, he, was the, he was the leader of the last collegiate team for Olympic basketball to win gold medal. Then he comes into, he enters the league in the heart of the golden era of NBA basketball, the 80s. You got prime Showtime Lakers, prime Boston Celtics, right? And then you had up and coming Detroit Pistons. So you, you had these three dominant or soon-to-be dominant teams that had more complete rosters, which is cool. I'm not, I'm not knocking the talent that those other teams had because they were built. They weren't uh, superstars trying to stack the deck. Well, Jordan had to go through the fire, man. So it, it, it was kind of like the golden era of the NBA. It was, it was like it... it Prepare Jordan to become what he's universally known for. See, what, what I'm trying to say is, man, you could take Michael Jordan in any era. And I believe you're going to get the same result, no matter what. Your record is your record, man. And, and if you play for the championship 11 times in, in your career, in your sport, and you don't lose. There's no match. There's no match. I'm sorry, man. And that's why everybody trying. So many people trying to take him down. But you can't, man. You can't, dog. And, and a lot and a lot of people that's trying to take him down, man. They weren't known for winning. They they had talent. They could ball. They had a stretch where. You can say, okay, man, you know, he playing at an all possible, you know, uh, all star level, maybe a, a second team, third team all NBA. But it's not even close, man. This debate is not close. It's not close. And it's bringing the sport down because what's happening is because of the fact they won't let this, this, this contrived debate go, well, the NBA finds itself trying to cater to this guy for what they trying to present him to be 
and he's proving year in and year in that he's not. Because if he was, he wouldn't have a losing record in championship play. That not only is that a separator, that's the greatest separator. Because they'll say, well, LeBron James been to the finals 10 times in his career. But they won't say all the talent that he had, the super teams that he generated to do that outside of his first finals uh, appearance in 2007. But even then, he showed his uh, the uh, uh, the drawbacks to his game. No mid range game at the you know uh, post game, and, and you know uh, he wound up shooting with like thirty five percent in that series. But what, what I'm trying to say is, man, what I'm trying to say is this: the championship. Yeah, they'll say ten finals. Well, there's no way in the world that you should have more losses than wins in championship play. Where well, they can sit there and try to make a plausible argument. Cause they always have to, they always have to move the goalposts, and they confuse themselves. But the truth stands out. The truth don't have to trick itself, and that's why so many people gravitate to Jordan. That's why so many people tune in to watch him when the stakes were at his highest. That's why when he broke through, they'll say, "Well, he didn't beat Detroit, but he every year he got closer and closer. He put fear in the Pistons." The 89 Easter Conference Finals, uh, the best team Detroit ever had winning 63 games that, that year, when they had Rick Mahorn on the team, and going into that Conference Finals, you can just see the trepidation in their faces when they's like, man, we got to go up against this dude. And, and he, he led the Bulls to a 2-1 series lead versus the Pistons, forcing them to come up with the Jordan rules to defeat him, meaning... If they didn't come up with the Jordan rules, Michael Jordan would have beat them in 1989, just like he upset the Cleveland Cavaliers in the first round. So, in closing, eleven championships, unblemished, unblemished. It's not a close, man. It's not a debate, man. And the reason that he's unblemished is so many factors that attribute to it. Number one, he didn't take no shortcuts. Number two, going against those all-time teams helped cultivate a player, turned them into steel, and when he broke through, you knew in your heart of hearts it was all over. Well, nobody going to beat him. He knew it. His teammates knew it. Phil Jackson knew it. The opponents knew it. The media knew it. And the fans tuning in watching basketball knew it. It was a trickle-down effect. And Jerry Cross, I give him credit, man. He, he had the eye to, to bring in. He didn't have to bring in those superstars, though. He brought in and drafted players, man, that can play off of Jordan. And even then, it took years for Scottie Pippen and Horace Grant to mature to the point where they could fulfill their role on the team. That's all Michael Jordan needed, man. And at that point, Jerry Cross's work was, was pretty easy. It, it, what I'm not trying to knock what I'm trying to say is to where a lot of times I think Michael Jordan made it so good and, 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 and they were so confident in his ability, I think a lot of times it gave them this sense of, like, his confidence, it it, it elevated Scottie Pippen's uh, uh, psyche as a player to where <laughs> years later, I think Scottie Pippen looks at himself a certain way because he played with Michael Jordan. So when fans of LeBron try to uh, 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 turn down Jordan by lifting up Pippen, they actually don't see that they're showing how great Jordan was.
because all Jordan needed was one prime teammate to win those championships with. And that's why Michael Jordan has no problem saying without Scottie Pippen, we don't win, you know, uh, like he said in his Hall of Fame speech and all the videotapes you see, you don't just see me, you see Scottie Pippen. He don't have no problem saying that because he know that he helped Scottie Pippen become the player that we know him to be uh, to be years later once the Bulls start winning. You see, so when they try to attack him, if you use logic, it actually points to how great Michael Jordan was. So what I'm trying to say is, man, when he beat my team, the Lakers, in 1991 for that championship, it was almost like, I'm going to show you how much uh, uh, nervousness and, and, and trepidation you had watching him play against your team. When the Lakers uh, stole game one of that series, when Sam Perkins hit that game winner, and I think I think we won like 93-91 that game one. Man, you man, you sitting there, man, you relieved like, whoo! Man, we got that first one, dog. Man, you just you you feel good, man, because you knew the avalanche was gonna hit. And in that game two, man, when Jordan went nuts and he made that classic move, you know, in the air, shift the ball from right to left and kiss it off the glass. You just kind of knew right there and there, man. You know, they tied the series. And then Magic Johnson was like, well, no matter if you get blown out by 20 or lose by one, the series is tied 1-1. One, one. And I'm sitting there like, yeah, man, but this Michael Jordan, dog. Uh. Then you start saying, then we, we we lost game three, Bulls go up 2-1. Then you start saying to yourself, man, we can just win game four and tie it. And then when they win game four and went up 3-1, then you'd be like, man, we can just win game five. You know, you know, go back to Chicago down three two. Maybe we have a shot, but you never did, man. I'm telling you, dog. I'm telling you, man. But the other guy, the other guy, man, it's always about he need more help. That's been the constant thing uh, 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 during this uh, this era of uh, 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 teaming up that he he uh, brought brought forth to the NBA. You know, and. Uh, I mean, look, man, look, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, who, like, who, like I said, who you going to, you know, all the detractors out there with the championship, when you know, uh, let me put it this way, let me put it this way, on the even playing field where you can't pick your teammates and you have to elevate who the organization uh, uh, tries to build around you and you, you say to yourself, okay, no super team because that Bulls team was not a super team. The, the, see, the, the they was a dynasty because the more you win, the more stature you get as a player or as a team or as teammates. So the more popular, the more of uh, 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 the team and, and, and the teammates, the more their name resonate with you. So that's why they, they bring up uh, uh, Horace Grant and, and try to exaggerate uh, um his contribution suggesting that he was a superstar or that Dennis Rodman was a superstar or that Tony Kukoc was a superstar. Tony Kukoc ne never made an all-star game, a, a, a team. Never. Never. He was solid. He can hit big shots. But throughout the course of the 82 game season, when he was projected to be Scottie Pippen and Scottie Pippen, when Michael Jordan was playing baseball, well, he was relegated to being a six man. You see, so what, what I'm trying to say is, man, when you break this stuff down, when you understand the pecking order, when you understand competition, you see things for exactly what they are. And, and what I'm trying to say is with the championship on the line, where you absolutely have to have it, no excuses. Who y'all picking? I'm picking the guy that's 11 and 0 in championship play. I'm putting my money on that. Because it's simple math. If you got six championship losses out of ten appearances, and it, 
I won't even get into that. I won't even get into that. You got a 60% chance of losing. The other guy is money in the bank. When you look at it like that, there is no debate. And the only reason they try to downplay George's competition is because he is undefeated in the NBA Finals. If he was like 4-2, they wouldn't be doing that. Excuse me. Because the people that he defeated in, 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 the, in the finals, Maddie Johnson is, is, a, is a Mount Rushmore player. That means he's one of the top four greatest players to ever do it. Greatest point guards ever played this game. I'm talking about pure point guard. Got more playoff triple doubles than anybody in the history of the NBA, and I don't see nobody. Uh, uh, and, and, and Maddie Johnson really only played 12 seasons. Okay. Uh, he beat dream teamers. He beat players that was on Dream Teams 2, Dream Teams 3. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Now, I'm not saying, of course, every every era has uh, uh, great uh, players. Like, the, you know, LeBron James, he's faced, yes, he's faced great players in, throughout his career. But the difference is the great players that uh, Jordan faced, he beat them. He kept a lot of them from winning championships. He kept a lot of them from getting to the finals. Here go a perfect example, and I'm going to shut it on down. The Orlando Magic. With Shaquille O'Neal, Penny Hardaway, who was dubbed the best playmaker in the league, by the time Orlando started, you know, started dominating, Horace Grant, who came over from the Chicago Bulls as a free agent, Nick Anderson, who was one of the, the better uh, two guards in the league. Dennis Scott. By the time they reached the finals in 1995, the Orlando Magic had the best starting five in the NBA. The following year, 90, the 1995-1996 season, they won 60 games. And this was coming off of uh, the previous season when they defeated the Bulls in the playoffs. Michael Jordan's return to the NBA. They beat the Bulls in six games. So going into that series, the odds were really 50-50. And tell you the truth, there were questions about the Bulls because of Michael Jordan's return to the league. They didn't know if he was all the way back. And they was an older team. Dennis Rodman was about 35 years old. Pippen was older. You know, Harper was older. They had an older team out there. The Orlando Magic won 60 games. And just as many uh, experts predicted Orlando was going to win that series than the Bulls. The Bulls beat the Magic so bad. That was probably the most brutal sweep I've ever seen between one great team over the next. Game one. They destroyed the Magic by like 38, 40 points. Game two, they came back from 19 down. Orlando showed how great their starting five was in that first half. And the Bulls applied their full court trapping defense in that second half, shut Orlando down, came back and beat them. Orlando was so mentally defeated that several players on Orlando did not play the remainder of that series because I think they wanted no part of that. And then the Bulls won game three, go up 3 0. Scotty Pippen had a great game three, had like 27, 28 points. And that game four, man, Jordan dropped 45 on them, dog. And that series lasted about, what, seven days. And it was so brutal that ultimately Shaq went west. <laughs> Because they knew Jordan was back. And all the people that was talking when, when Jordan was out playing baseball and when he lost to Orlando, when they said, you know, he ain't the same in 45 as he was in, in 23 and he lost a step and all that. And, and they was calling Penny Hardaway the heir apparent because Penny Hardaway was a baller. Don't get me wrong. He was a baller. That year, Penny Hardaway was probably, to tell you the truth, at 95-96 season. 
Penny Hardaway was probably between a top five to top seven player. And they caught, because I remember early on that season, the regular season, uh, the Bulls played Orlando in Orlando, and Orlando beat the Bulls bad. And it was like, Eric Jordan is done. Michael Jordan is done. Penny is a new Eric Perry. I was like, man, y'all don't want to do that, man. Y'all don't want to do that. Because I'm going by the history of the precedent. And then when Jordan got their revenge, man, Orlando was done after that. And it was pretty, like, like when they started going, a lot of people said he was going to be the team in the 90s. And he shut that down in 96. He didn't let the Orlando Magic get past 1996. That was all she wrote. That's how great Michael Jordan was. When he beat you, you knew it was done. No excuses. So a lot of times Jerry Cross, I think he was trying to make moves just for the sake of making moves because it's like, well, you know, uh, <laughs> when even he didn't need to make no moves, he just felt like he just had to, you know, conducting his job as GM. You see? But the other on the other side, the other token, the GM got to be on the phone all the time, every day around the clock. Pre-trade deadline, post-trade deadline, all season. You know what I'm saying? Uh oh, how many draft picks we gonna give up? How much young talent we gonna flip over to bring in superstars? Is non-stop, and you right back where you was the previous year, outside that one season. It ain't even close. It's not even close. It's not even close. If Jordan or Kobe Bryant, Kobe Bean. You give them Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh, they win in all four finals down there in Miami. <laughs> but Jordan mentality was, like you said, I, I wasn't trying to uh, uh, team up with Magic and Bird. I wanted to beat those guys. The mentality is different. And it... Excuse me. Ultimately, it reflects in that finals record. It's not even close. And if Jordan had not retired to go play baseball, and if they had not broke their team up, they probably broke the Bulls up one year too soon. You talking about a situation where this man could have won eight straight championships. Eight. He left two on the table. And to show you, to show you where, where the logic applies, that it's appropriate, it wasn't like he returned back and he never won again. He returned back, got back in basketball shape, and racked off another three-peat. <laughs> and not only that, but during the regular season, 72 wins. And in the, in the 97 season, they was one game away from winning 70 again. They lost the last regular season game to the New York Knicks. And that came down to the last possession. They won 72 games, 69 games. And Kukok was out a lot of those games in the end. So I think he suffered like a shoulder injury or something. And then 62 wins and 98 when Scottie Pippen is like the first 35 games com coming off their foot uh, injury. So let's say if Pippen would have uh, played that whole season in 98, you talking about a scenario where this team could have averaged 70 wins. <laughs> it ain't close. Kobe, they had a block of trade to keep him from winning anymore. But championship record 11 titles, no defeats, man. You can't you can't That's the greatest separation there is. That's the greatest sep Because of the fact he set the ball so high, now he's being penalized for winning. That's where we at in sport, sports commentary 
and conjecture. That's where we at right now. The bar has been lowered because he set the bar too high. He didn't set it high or maintain it. He <laughs> how can I say it, man? He took it and set it beyond the stratosphere, man. And I, I'm not trying to like it ain't like I'm trying to jock him. I'm just being real. Then he retired again, man. Mainly because the Bulls were gonna break that team up. But what I'm saying at the end of the day, when you cut your TV on and you watch this man play with the title line, you never felt he was gonna lose. You never felt, like I said, when it, when Lakers won that game one, you felt relieved. You're like, man, we stole that first one. Oh man, thank you. But then that reality hit in game two, and you kind of knew it was over then. So I just want to share that, man. Like I said, man, I'm a, I'm a stickler for history. And, and right now they're trying to diminish history, but in the end it will not work. Uh, the history will stand and went out when all this is said and done. So I just want to shut that, share that, and I will shut it down. And until next time, this is JB for a BTB behind the bench.